Africa could achieve during the next 40-year period, essentially what China achieved during the period from 1980 to 2020. I want to leave one message, and that is that Africa's growth prospects for the next 40 years are extremely strong. Africa could achieve during the next 40-year period essentially what China achieved during the period from 1980 to 2020. China, as you know, achieved economic growth averaging around 10% per year economic growth. Phenomenal. When anything grows at 10% per period or per year, it means that it doubles in seven years. So China achieved that growth over 40 years. That means it was doubling essentially in economic size every seven years. And in a 40-year period, that is five doublings, 35 years plus. So if you double five times, that's two times two times two times two times two. That's a 32-time increase of output. China achieved about a 35-time increase of output from 1980 to 2020. And it went from a country of 1.4 billion people that was very poor in 1980 to either the second or the first largest economy in the world today, depending on how you measure things. If you measure the economy at what we call market prices, then China's number two. If you measure the economy at what we call international prices, so a common set of prices for each sector comparing the U.S. and China, then China is the largest economy in the world. And China went from being a low-income country to a high-income country in a period of just over 40 years. My view is that this is possible for Africa and that this should be the aim. And it's actually quite convenient to speak about it now in 2023 because 40 years brings us to 2063, which of course is the birth of a unity of Africa, the Organization of African Unity, which in this great city, in this country, was founded in 1963. And all of Africa's aspirations are dated to the year 2063. I like that because it gives us a 40-year lead time, and development is a long-term process. It's not a short-term process. And if we take a 40-year lead time and consider Africa's starting point today, we should aim for nothing less than 8 to 10% per year compound economic growth over the next 40 years so that African poverty will be a thing of the past and Africa will be solidly a middle-income region of the world and many parts of Africa high income in the world by 2063. And I want to explain why that is feasible and as the title of the talk about finance suggests, why finance is so essential to achieving that objective. But the basic point is that Economic development is a very high return activity if you do it right. And if you're lucky to avoid wars and calamities, so you have to stay peaceful. This is critical. And if the neighbors are getting along with each other, this is critical. Because economic development depends on a peaceful region, in this case a peaceful African continent, and an African continent that is in good relations with other parts of the world. That is for sure. But if that geopolitical environment can be achieved, and why not, then the economic side of the story is rather favorable. And the reason it's favorable is that if you do what I do for a living, which is Excel spreadsheets, basically, 
and ask what are reasonable scenarios based on economic modeling and economic history for the kind of growth that can be achieved, what you find is that the returns to economic development of a poor region are just about the highest returns on investment of anything in the world. I'd rather invest in Ethiopia's future than in some high-tech company because a high-tech company will not achieve compound interest returns of what Ethiopia can achieve of 15 to 20 percent, not rate of growth, but compound return on investment, which is a different concept. It's the financial return on the investments that are made. What's the real difference between the United States and Ethiopia in economic, return, in economic uh, basis? The real difference is that the United States, because of its history, many advantages and so forth, right now has a very high stock of assets for the people to benefit from. And the three main kinds of assets that the United States has are the education of the population, which averages right now about 15 years of average education, because in past history, people finished high school. And now, of course, 40% finish tertiary education. So it's about 16 years as of now, average years of education. A second gap is infrastructure. The physical infrastructure in the United States is robust and enormous. When I was a kid, I grew up in Detroit. Detroit was the motor city where all the automobiles were produced. So Detroit made sure politically that we build highways everywhere in the United States. And my youth was uh, uh, very much involved uh, in listening to building the interstate highway system between 1955 and 1975 in the United States. And that was thousands and thousands of miles of highway that linked a continent at full scale. Ethiopia doesn't have that and Africa doesn't have that. Right now, the physical connectivity in Africa is very low. It's low in all regards. It's low in paved roads, it's low in highways, it's low in power grid, it's low in fiber. But none of that is fundamental that can't be overcome. All of it is actually, you know, in its way, rather straightforward investment. The technologies are known. NAPAD has produced the maps of where the grid should go, where the rail should go, where the power should go. So it's not a deep mystery, but that's the second big difference. And the third big difference, of course, is the business sector, the business investments. Business, why is business in, in the United States uh, so robust? Well, one reason is simply there's a very skilled workforce and there is all the infrastructure that's needed wherever the goods are produced. You can ship them to a port, you can put them on rail, the freight system is very good and the power is reliable and so forth. And so returns to private investment are indeed very high. Now, if you add up the physical capital in the United States, that is the infrastructure and the business capital, it's about $210,000 per person. The investments that are needed to overcome the current liabilities, poor infrastructure, poor connectivity, not enough rail, and so forth, is not that expensive when you think about the returns that will come from that investment. Africa is a continent brimming with potential, from its rich natural resources to its vibrant cultures and entrepreneurial spirit. Africa is supposed to become a global powerhouse. Africa's potential lies in its youthful population, its expanding market, and its increasing connectivity to the global economy. With the right investment and policies, Africa can unleash a wave of innovation and growth that benefit both its people and the world. One of Africa's greatest assets 
it is abundant natural resources, including minerals, oil, and arable land. With sustainable management and responsible investment, Africa's natural wealth can drive economic development and lift millions out of poverty. Africa's potential extends beyond its resources. It is a hotbed of innovation and creativity, with a burgeoning startup ecosystem that is generating solutions to some of the continent's most pressing challenges. From fintech to renewable energy, African entrepreneurs are harnessing technology to drive social impact and economic progress. Africa's cultural diversity is another source of strength and potential. Its art, music, and traditions are capturing global attention and driving tourism and cultural exchange. By investing in the cultural preservation and promotion, Africa leveraged heritage as a driver of sustainable development and empowerment. But perhaps the greatest potential of Africa lies in the people. With the right investment in education, healthcare, and infrastructure, Africa's youth can unleash a wave of innovation and creativity that transform the continent and the world. Africa's future is bright, but realizing its potential requires collective actions and partnership. Government, businesses, and civil society must work together to create an enabling environment that unlocks Africa's full potential. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like and share your thoughts in the comment box below. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.